welcome to phase two. We are starting with the mobility and movement portion of the membership. And now in this portion, we're gonna go through every joint and part of the body and talk about how it should work, what it is, and why it matters to you. But we're gonna start off with a brief overview of what anatomy, what your overall, what everything in your body is. We're gonna call this the Anatomy 101 session, right? So we're gonna do a brief definition of a few different pieces so that you have some clarity on things moving forward. And the first and foremost thing we're gonna talk about is the difference between a ligament and a tendon because these two things get used interchangeably a lot, but they're not the same, they're very different. So a tendon is what attaches a muscle to a bone. So they're both connective tissue, ligaments and tendons, but tendons specifically attach a muscle to a bone. So you have a biceps tendon, and that's your biceps, and a tendon attaches it to the bone. Your quadriceps tendon attaches the muscle to the bone. So all of these tendons, every muscle you have in your body has some form of tendon, otherwise, your skeleton is just a bunch of bones and it's not going to move. So the tendons are what attach the muscle to the bone and ligaments are what attach, attach bones to bones. So if you've ever had an ACL tear or know someone that does, that's your anterior cruciate ligament. That attaches your femur to your tibia. There's all kinds of ligaments in different bones that hold the thing together and that essentially it acts like the seat belt on your car. It keeps you strapped into your seat, but if you're in a situation where you're relying on the seat belt of your car, a lot of things went wrong. All right, so tendons, ligaments. Next, we're gonna talk about fascia. Fascia is connective tissue that interrupts your whole body. If you think about a spider web, or if you've ever cut open a chicken breast, you can see the kind of covering that, um, it's like this film over the muscle, that's fascia. Fascia is very dense, and that honestly accounts for most of the stiffness we have. It helps, it works with the bones and the muscles to keep everything and hold structure. So fascia is all over your body. Every part of your body is covered in fascia and it serves to keep your structure. Then we're looking at muscles. Muscles are the actual portions of your body that contract and expand. They move in two directions. There's different types of muscle for different joints. So your, your digestive system has specific muscles. Your cardiovascular system, your heart has specific muscles. And then there's skeletal muscles that are all over your body. And those are what provide the movement, right? So muscles are what we can change and move. Fascia is just support, but it can be moved. So fascia is not as mobile as muscle, but it's not as stiff and dense as bone. So it's right in the middle. Then we're looking at our bones. Your body has 206 bones. And now they're all shapes and sizes. They're all different types of connections, all different types of joints. But those are what form the frame for your body. And your bones are very important. If you've ever talked to someone who's older and has osteoporosis or osteopenia, your bones are really important. And the cool thing about your bones is that they form along lines of stress. It's called Davis's Law. They form along lines of stress to whatever you do. So you see soccer players get the bow-legged look. It's because they're doing this all the time. Your, your bones will move and shape based off what you do. Another example, baseball pitchers. They do a lot of throwing, so they'll actually see a twist in their humerus. So that's the upper bone in your upper arm to accommodate for what their movement is, all right? So, that's a brief layout of all the different anatomy terms. I mean, there's millions you could learn, but those are the big ones you want to know. Now we're going to talk about systems. Now, there are 11 major systems in your body, from everything that governs your skeleton to your hormones, everything you can think of, the, your lymphatic system and in between. But we're going to talk about five major ones that really affect, let's say, the training portion of athleticism. And obviously, every single portion is important, but these are, we're going to keep it short here today. So first, you've got your skeletal system. 206 bones, that's everything that has to do with the bones in your body. You've got your muscular system. There are over 650 muscles in your body, and these do everything from control movement in terms of keeping your heart, your digestive going, your digestive system going, and giving you the ability to move and run and sprint and jump and play. Then we're looking at a respiratory system. This is everything to do with oxygen exchange. This is when you breathe in, air comes into your lungs and has to get transferred through blood vessels and then passed through your body and used in exchange for carbon dioxide which gets expelled. There's a whole system for that. Then you have your cardiovascular system. This is everything to do with your heart and your vessels that transfer oxygen rich blood through your body. Now you have three different types of blood vessels broadly speaking. You've got your arteries which take oxygen rich blood away from the heart. You've got your capillaries, which are the exchange vessels in between your arteries and your veins. And you have your veins, which take oxygen poor blood back to the heart. And then finally, we have our nervous system. And this is everything to do with your brain, your nerves, your spinal cord. Your muscle, your whole body is just a bunch of flesh if you don't have your brain and your spinal cord working with you. This is how you perceive sensation. This is how you communicate with your body. This is how you learn, you grow, you interact, you move. Everything runs through this. 
obviously you have your endocrine system, which keeps your hormones functioning well. You've got your um, lymphatic system, which keeps your overall uh, immune system and fights infection. So they're all important, but we're going to stick with those five today as a brief overview. Now, the last thing we'll talk about today is why this matters for you. Because if you don't take care of this and don't understand this, it's not going to make sense to anyone else. So a lot of people think about their body like they would think about a car. I don't need to know my car, if it's broken down or making some weird noise, I take it to a mechanic and they'll fix it. And that's how people go to a doctor. They say, my knee hurts. I don't feel good. I feel tired. They don't know what's going on. They just kind of say, well, this is what's up and I fix it. But the thing is, no one will ever know your body as well as you because it is all subjective. It's how you experience it. And if you don't know the basics between these are this muscle, this is this bone, this is this system, this is how I should feel, this is how I should move, no one can do that for you. So it is so, so important that you take the time to learn at least the basics about your body so that when you go to a coach, when you go to your doctor, when you go to a physical therapist, you can give them accurate explanation about what's going on, what hurts, what feels good, how you're feeling, how you're moving, and then you can learn your body better. So take the time in this portion and pay attention to the joints, to the bones, to everything we're talking about and interpret it into how you move and how you feel and your training and performance will get better, I promise you. All right, let's get to it.